Welcome to Sharon Local History. In this video, I would like to tell you a little bit about shoe industry in Sharon. So Sharon was never industrial town. It was mostly farming and water industries. Um, however, there was there were a few smaller industries that we can call it that I think. So um, leather and shoe making was quite popular. I will talk about a period from about 1750s to 1890, 1900s. So I think that was 150 years of the shoe industry and leather processing when it was quite popular in Sharon. Tanning pits in Sharon seem to cluster close to North Main Street. Uh, with some exceptions, some of the sites have now been covered with um, mills and ponds. So originally the, the, the people for processing leather needed water, but that was in the um, late 1700s and eventually those uh, areas were dammed and turned into water privileges. A water source was important to tanning, not as power but as soaking agent. Hemlock bark and oak bark were used to cure hides of animals, usually once slaughtered for food. Captain Richard Hickson had tan pits on North Main Street close to his homestead. Um, Oliver Curtis had pits close by where he cured white leather from the skins of trapped animals. He eventually went further west to get better supplies of hides. A man named Gilbert and later Jeremiah Richard had tan pits at the sawmill. On Viaduct Street, Lemuel Esty had a tanning operation and a man named Eberly cured calf skins by a new process in a factory on Morse Street. Although the tanning pits seemed unlikely to have supplied all the leather for the bootmakers in Sharon, this industry flourished here in the first half of the 19th century. The area along Upland Road, Norwood Street, Mosquonicat Street and Richards Avenue was known as Shoemaker Valley. Boots made in Sharon sold in Boston, Philadelphia as well as New York. During 1855, 29,604 pairs of boots and 1,000 pairs of shoes were manufactured by 84 male employees and 16 female employees. So it was actually 100 people that um, made over close to 30,000 pairs of boots and 1,000 pairs of shoes just in one year. Ten years later, the number of pairs of boots had risen to 33 1,847, but the employees had dropped to 71 males and 18 females. By 1892, the business had died out. Although Joshua Whitemore, a glazier living on Norwood Street, seemed to have been the earliest shoemaker dating to the late 1770s, later manufacturers seemed to concentrate near the center of Sharon on Depot Street and Pond Street. On Depot Street, Warren Bullard had a shop near the railroad tracks with Albert Middleton close by. Joel Petit, a tall, dignified man, had a shop on the same street as did George Gay and Joel Hewins for several years. Bond Street was also a popular place. The three Hickson brothers, John R., Albert G., and Charles D., built a shop in the first block. Their former shop had been in an attached room on Sable's Tavern, now moved to High Street. Charles Winship and Addison Johnson first set up shop on South Main Street, but then moved to Pond Street. One of the first boot manufacturers on Pond Street was Amasa Dunbar, who built the stone cottage, which was only recently demolished. He started business in 1837, adding his shop on the south side of the house. As a later sideline, he made coffins, and the story is told that he visited the gravely ill to estimate the measurements for future use. It is true that in 1865, there were 25 coffins manufactured in his business, employing one male. 
This is the end of the video. I hope that I was able to introduce you uh, the shoe industry in Sharon and uh, I stuck in lots of uh, stock images which are not photographs from Sharon but that will give you a good idea about the period. Thank you for watching Sharon Local History and feel free to subscribe to our channel.